Okay, so last class we had taken a look at how to solve an absolute value equation, and today we're going to take a look at their graphs and how the graph relates to the equation that you're solving, so you can do a quick check on your calculator, and then we're going to take a look at the transformations of that equation. So to start at the top of the page, I have a graph of an absolute value equation, and it states that it's a V-shaped graph that points upward or downward, just like a parabola, um, the parent function, which is the most basic, and I realize it says function, and we'll focus more with uh, and talk more about functions at the end of the year. So I am going to write it in terms of y equals and not f of x, but I did want to use that language because it is the most basic uh, equation when it comes to absolute value. So y equals the absolute value of x. Again, it can be upside down, it can be right side up. It is symmetric about the axis of symmetry. And the point where the graph changes directions is called the vertex. So if you take a look at the graph to the right, the axis of symmetry is drawn here so that the left side folds on to the right. It still goes through the vertex. So our vertex is 0, 0 with the axis of symmetry, still a vertical line, so the equation would be x equals 0. When you take a look at this side of the v, okay, you do have, this is actually part of the equation which is y equals x, as it has a positive slope of 1 and passing through the origin, where this side of the v, this part, it, well the part of the v is part of the equation y equals negative x as it goes through the origin and has a slope equal to negative 1. We're going to focus more on the graph on the back. First, I just want to talk about the relationship uh, when you solve the equation algebraically in its graph. So if we take a look at the equation x, the absolute value of x minus 1 equals 2, and solve it, so I set it equal to 2, and set x minus 1 equal to a negative 2. When I add the 1, we get 3 add the 1, we get negative 1. So those are my solutions or my roots. We have a positive, we have a negative. If you want to check or solve by graphing, okay, you want this equal to y. So I have to subtract the 2 to move it over. So I have 0 equals the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 2. Now when you type in the equation, this is where the y is going to be. So absolute value of x minus 1 minus 2. And you want to know for what values of x is y equal to 0, okay? So I want you to type that equation into your calculator. Our points are going to be from negative 2 to 4 to see that symmetry for x. So we have negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1, we're starting to see that symmetry, 0, 0, 1, 1. So here's the point in the middle, so the point where it changes directions, here's the vertex, and let's take a look at the graph. So the vertex is at 1, down 2, with 0, negative 1, 2, negative 1, and then 3, 0, 4, 1. You, we can extend all the way through the arrows because it didn't give us the specific domain. And there's the graph of the equation. Now to go back and answer that question, for what values of y, or what values of x, is y equal to 0? So y is 0 anywhere along the x-axis, and you can see that right here on your table of values. These are still called roots, as we've talked about. So here's root 2, here's root 1. So negative 1 and 3, the x values, are the same that we get when we solve it algebraically. So if you want to check your answers by graphing, you have to first set the equation equal to 0. Okay, and then where the zero is, you put your y. And then when you do set it equal to zero and graph it, the x-intercepts are your solutions, just as they were with the parabola 
in a quadratic equation. Now we're going to take a look at one that's upside down. And I know that it's upside down because of the negative out front. And we're going to specifically with this graph focus on the shifts that are made from the parent function y equals the absolute value of x. So we're looking at on your table from negative 5 to 1 for x. And our vertex is negative 2, 3. And the points go 2, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, or the values for y. So let's graph that. Negative 5, 0. Negative 4, 1. Negative 3, 2. Negative 2, 3. Uh, negative 1, 2. And sketch our v-shaped okay so we know that the negative out front okay this turned it upside down and this number within here also indicates a shift left and right so let's make note that this was upside down now from the origin and that's what we're looking at the shift left 2, up 3, that turning point our vertex was. So when it's a plus 2, that means it's going to go left 2 units when it shifts. And then this plus 3 means it's going to go up 2 units. Now we think plus 2, we think we're moving right. Um, but it is backwards and it's the opposite. And note too, with the vertex being negative 2, 3, in the equation within your absolute value symbol, that x value will always be opposite, okay? In order to have it shift left, we have to have the plus 2 to indicate left, but a negative 2 um, indicates on the x-axis that we're left of the origin. So when we talk about these shifts, it's all according to the parent function, which looks like this with the vertex right at the origin. Okay, so this went left two, up three. It flipped upside down, and the width remained the same. We still have a slope of uh, one and negative one. So if I look at the green, we go up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, or right one down one. So we still have the same slope, or the width of the v-shape remain the same and we'll see on the back how that's affected if you had to solve this um, by graphing the values if you take a look would be negative 5 and 1 will give you an x so for 0 equals negative x plus 2 plus 3 x would be equal to negative 5 and 1 if you were solving this equation. So the table on the back highlights all of these shifts or changes for a graph that's not your parent function. So if you're given y equals x or y equals the absolute value of x, you know it's a v-shaped curve with a vertex. It's upward right at the origin. If I look at an equation like this, as we talked about, this hk is the vertex. The numbers that are here with the x value being the opposite. Okay, where your axis of symmetry is always going to go through the x value of that vertex. So the axis of symmetry line would be x equals h. Now, to determine if the graph opens up or down, that's all based on the a up front. If a is positive, it's going to open upward. And if a is negative, it's going to be downward. Okay, the um, next part, okay, deals with um, the A also relates to how wide or how narrow the V is. So the graph is wider than our parent function if the absolute value of the A, meaning when you take the absolute value, if it's negative, it becomes positive, is becomes wider if it's 
less than one. And it is narrower if the absolute value of A is greater than one. And think about slope, okay? If A was one half versus three, this means you're going up one over two. Okay, you're going over more than you're going up. If it was three or three over one, that means you're going up three and just over one. So you have a greater slope if that helps you with uh, how wide or how narrow the graph is gonna be. The next part of that uh, table, um, we have the only difference between this and this is the negative H versus positive H. And that is a shift left and right. If it's negative, you're gonna go right. And if it's positive, the graph is gonna move left. And outside, this K value, negative K versus positive K, is the shift up and down. So if it's negative, that means you're gonna go down that many units. If it's positive, you're gonna go up. So this first question with transformations asks you which equation represents the shift or the translation of y equals the absolute value of x. So there's the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. How did we move from that graph to this graph? And you can type all these in and see what matches on your calculator, but we know some things that are going on here. It's still up one over one, up one over one. So the slope hasn't changed, and you can see none of them have an A value other than one, okay? It's still right side up, so it's still positive. The only thing that happened with this graph is it went from a vertex of zero, zero to zero, four. So it went up four units. It didn't move left or right. So when you have the shift within the parent or within the absolute value symbols, that's a shift left and right. Outside's up and down, so the plus four indicates that we went up or shifted up. And number five, we're actually gonna graph some of these shifts without the calculator, okay? So there's the parent function. Here's y equals absolute value of x. In part A, we're gonna graph um, y equals the absolute value of x minus two minus five. So let's note the shifts first. It's gonna be right side up as A is one and it's positive. X minus two within the symbol indicates we're gonna go right two units. And then the negative five indicates that we're gonna go down five. So from the vertex, right two, down five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five is right here. Again, the width stays the same as there is an A value of one out front. And we just go up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one to draw the V. So here's Y equals absolute X minus two minus five. The next one, this indicates that it's going to be upside down because it's negative. Plus two means we're gonna go left two, and then plus four means we're gonna go up four, all from the vertex. So starting at the vertex, moving left two, and then up one, two, three, four puts us here. And instead of going um, up one over one, I'm gonna actually go down one, or right one, down one, or right one, left one, because the V-shaped is upside down, because it's negative. So here's, I'll label this one up here, Y equals the absolute value, or negative absolute value, of X plus two plus four. And at the bottom, we just have to describe the shift or movement from Y equals X to Y equals the absolute value of negative X. Now, y equals the absolute value of negative x. Is there anything going on here? So if I were to take, let's just do some work up here for a moment, the absolute value of three or the absolute value of negative three. Does anything change? No, we still get three. So that is no change, okay? So we should make a note that this is no change, no shift. But this, however, is indicating that we're gonna go down five. So my answer, describe the movement. Um, there was a shift, or the V shifted down five units. And the last one, 
one half. And you can verify this on your calculator, but again, think of it as in terms of slope, up one over two, we're going over more than we are going up. That means it's gonna get wider. And I like to work left to right. There's no change in whether it's right side up or upside down. Okay, so you always wanna check that first. The minus six indicates it's gonna go right six units. So I could say it's shifted right six units and the plus three indicates it's gonna go up three units.